Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Over the previous year since the launch of Horizons, I've been to many planets all over the galaxy. From this side of the galaxy near the human inhabited bubble, towards the centre of the galaxy and indeed on the far side of the galaxy. Some of what you see here are the planets I've landed on. I was looking through some of my old footage and I noticed just how many very interesting planets there have been throughout the life cycle of Horizons. Whether they're the ice planets or the high metal content worlds or indeed the rocky worlds, many of which I come across during the distant worlds expedition and there's some footage of that right here. As I was going through these old videos, the sheer broad variation of planets really did strike home and it made me realise that I haven't come across anything like these for quite some time now. Of course, I don't explore quite to the extent that I used to. I spend much of my time now in the inhabited bubble. But nonetheless, just look at some of these planets. Here, near the galactic core, were some of the most impressive planets I ever come across. And this one in particular always sticks in my mind. It's a high metal content world, fairly high above the galactic plane. And in just a moment, you're about to see the precise location of it. If you do want to head out this way, I'd love to hear back from you. Maybe take a few screenshots because I'd be interested to see what this planet looks like now. There's a very specific reason I'm actually asking that, and I'll get to that point in just a moment. But I do want to focus on these planets for a moment longer. This one here, like I say, is a high metal content planet. And back then, it's these type that seem to have the most diversity. These are the reasons I go out there into the depths of space to explore. It's not about making credits, it's about finding locations like this. Both discovery and exploration all rolled up into one. For me, it's an amazing feeling. As I know from experience, back on the Distant Worlds expedition, talking with other people, that many, many of them felt the same way. And as I continued to travel around this galaxy, I soon come to believe that the universe was filled with a massive diversity of different locations. And that's a belief which seemed to hold true for a very long time. So long as you stuck to the path, before long you'll inevitably come across a rather unique and stunning location. Yet, relatively recently, that seems to be something that's changed. Here you can see a comparison between two system maps. The one on the left is from the Elite Dangerous Horizons release, and on the right is the latest release. And I'll show you that again right here. The world closest to the star there is showed down in the little screen at the bottom. And you can see in the latest release, it has changed colour. So the question is, as to whether this has only changed on the system map, or whether it's actually changed in reality. Now, unfortunately, one of the greatest strengths with Elite can sometimes be a bit of a downfall, and that is the sheer scope and scale of the galaxy. It can take so long to get back to certain locations, so I've got no way at the moment of getting back to that location that's in the comparison shot. So what we're looking at here instead are some screenshots from Ziggy Stardust from the Elite Dangerous forums. This was all taken on a planet back during the Distant Worlds expedition, and you can see it all looks very nice, very green. It's a bit of a long way away. The location is on the screen now, and you can see what the planet looks like when you're up in orbit. And you can see also that there's a system map screenshot right at the top, and what we'll have a look at now is what the system map looks like right now. So here, you can see that the colour is drastically different. Again, unfortunately, we don't have any screenshots from the surface of the planet, though, but it seems undoubtedly that things have changed. This is another location, then. And again, I'll show the location right there on the uh, screenshot. You can see it in the text. Now, if you happen to be near any of these locations, I'd be extremely grateful if you're able to get some screenshots from down on the surface of the planets so we can have some basic comparison shots. It'd be very interesting to see what these planets look like now. I suspect, quite likely, they have changed in colour. And the colour I'm highly suspecting them to have changed to is a beige colour. Now, Michael Brooks, the executive producer for Elite Dangerous, has commented on this issue. And he says that the changes to the system maps are for the lighting so that they better reflect the colour of the actual local star. But the question, at the moment at least, still remains unanswered as to whether the planetary surface themselves should have changed in colour. Quite a few people seem to have reported on this issue, and it seems to be affecting mostly metal content planets. The sheer variety in colour has now gone, and what we're stuck with are planets that are almost entirely beige in colour. So for metal content planets at least, the sheer variation that was there previously currently seems to be absent. I'm hoping that we can get some clarification on this issue before too much longer, 
and I'm also hoping that it's an unintended change, or at the very least, a step towards greatly improving at these types of planets. So, with that out of the way then, I once again headed out into the depths of space to seek out some very interesting locations, and this time, my intent was to avoid any and all basification of the galaxy. Because, you know, let's face it, there's some far more interesting colours out there than beige. And oh look, some more beige planets. The search to find planets other than beige turned out to be far more difficult than I was expecting. Now this may be because I was on the far side of the galaxy, or it may be because of the recent changes, but either way, I reluctantly logged out of that account and logged into my other account located at Colonia. And here, things were a little bit more interesting. And I've since made a new rule for myself, and that's to seek out the smallest planets. The smaller ones seem to have much more interesting features, and they're riddled with cracks, canyons, and craters. And if you're particularly lucky, you'll find them filled with mist as well. So this particular planet is situated in the same system as the station Colonia Dream. Colonia is expanding rather nicely lately, and Frontier are making a drive to get as many players out this way as possible, and it's quite an extensive distance to come at over 20,000 light years away from home. Most people who are coming this way, for them it will probably be a one way trip without the intention of actually coming back. But if you look at the visuals out here, it's a location that's well worth the trip. It's unlike anything you'll find near the current inhabited bubble. What's more, this is a prime spot in terms of places to visit. You're very close to the galactic core and you're also situated right near three at the very least great big nebula, all of them different colour. There's still a lot of resources lacking within Colonia, it still needs a good amount of shipyards and outfitting, but hopefully before long, those are the sort of things that are going to make it out this way. Eventually, I looked back into my account again with Commander Pompeii, right at the rim of the galaxy, I made a few more jumps, travelling another few hundred light years, and sticking to my new rule, I travelled to this planet, very very close to the star as you just saw, and this one is extremely small. Just look at these surface features here, absolutely stunning I find, and it reminds me a lot of the moon Ariel all the way back in the solar system. Now many people often comment on the sense of scale within the game. It can be quite difficult to get that true sense of scale to find the truly huge places, but it's locations like this that for me at least really do a wonderful job of conveying that sense of scale. So very long way away from home you can see the galactic core right there above the horizon. I think I'm close to 50,000 light years, maybe 55,000 light years away from the solar system right now. And it is indeed a very lonely location. When you do find locations like this and you want to land on them, the thing I want most of all often is to be able to drive around in an SRV with another person and that really does add significantly to the experience of exploring out here. It's something that I really do miss. But I'm also hoping that it's something that will be rectified with the multi-crew update, patch 2.3. I'm hoping that once that drops, players will be able to jump in to a friend ship regardless of how far away they are. Now there's of course many ways around that you can get in lore, maybe you just jump in as an NPC crew member. And then as soon as these sessions end, you're disappeared and you're back to your original location again. Nothing permanent or persistent about it, but it gives you the ability to share with the friend's experiences out here in the depths, out here in the void. And that really would give Multicrew a nice addition to exploration. Multicrew has the ability to offer huge amounts of potential to the game, but for me, much of that will be dependent on how and when we can interact with other players' activities. Exploration for me is a huge part of the game, and it would be a shame to have Multicrew limited to purely combat-centric activities. At any rate, once again I've managed to find a really nice planet, and actually spent a lot of time here driving around in the SRV, Nearly trashed it once or twice, but fortunately, as you probably saw early on, I brought many of them along with me. The question on the beigeification of the galaxy then continues to be a bit of a strange one. If you've got any planets where they've dramatically changed over the preceding months, I'd love to see some comparison screenshots if you have them to hand. Or if you happen to be near some of the locations I mentioned earlier, I'd also love to see some screenshots or footage from those locations. It'd be something I'd greatly appreciate. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.